Hi, my teachers, principals, and educators. In all these episodes, we are trying to explore how do we transform the teaching fraternity from one of teaching to empowerment of students. I mentioned some time back, the puppet show should end. How long are we going to monitor the external behavior of children? In the classroom, they behave well. In front of parents, they are doing excellently well. The moment that supervision is gone, then they go back to normalcy. That normal condition should change. That is called empowerment. That means the children should know what they should do at a point of time. They should realize their responsibilities in life. The moment they respond to this question, what is that I want to become? What is my talent? What is the opportunity? What are my weakness? What are my strengths? What are the threats? You don't expect them to know all this because they are young. They are not yet experienced. Even among the grown-up people, we are not clear about all this. So the very purpose of teaching is not to transfer some knowledge because I have and you do not have, but it is to make students responsible. In my 40 years of experience, in teaching, in running uh, schools, helping educational institutions, coaching, I found a common denominator among the students who are scoring very good marks. The common denominator is owning responsibility. Not for the behavior, but for the outcome. And that is why we are looking at from teaching to empowering students. So, in this episode, we are going to explore what is the overall purpose of education. Is it for marks? If it is for mark, if it is for gaining a degree, if it is for getting a job, you don't need a school. Today, we have online education. There are a lot of sites. For example, you go to Khan Academy. KhanAcademy.org. You can learn everything under the earth from arithmetic to astrophysics. There are a lot of homeschooling available. You don't need to go to any school. We need schools, we need classrooms, we need teachers not to get marks. But then, what is the purpose? That is what we are going to explore. I am asking you a simple question, who or what decides the quality of our life? Next time, when you go for a shopping or when you travel, look at the passengers around, look at the people around, look at their quality of life. Next time, when you are traveling, when you are on the road, look at the number of cars. Look at the, the, the kind of dress people wear. You go to the restaurant, look at the quality of restaurants available. Next time when you go and stay in a hotel, look at what is the quality of hotel that you are staying. When it comes to flight, there are executive class. There are first class available. And there are economy class. When you go to a train, you have the undeserved compartment. You also have the AC first class. If you want to buy a pen, you get a pen for one rupee. You also get a pen for maybe a lakh of rupees. I am not saying quality means richness. I am not saying for a moment. But supposing you are not happy with the quality of your life. Supposing you are not happy about the one bedroom apartment you are living. Supposing you are not happy about the car that you are driving. 
you want a better quality. You go to a restaurant, you look at your friends, you think about your friends, oh, that person is in this hotel, but I am staying here. If there is a gap in terms of the quality of life we want and the quality of life we have, what decides? It all depends upon this question, why do we do what we do and why do we do that? The external behavior will decide the commercial value of my time. Time has a commercial value. One, of, one hour of my time and one hour of somebody else's time are the equal in terms of money. You hire a taxi, let's say. You hire a normal non-AC non taxi cab. Or you travel by an auto rickshaw or you go by a share auto. You travel one hour, how much you have to pay? Maybe 10 rupees, 20 rupees. But if you want to travel by Mercedes Benz or Audi, same one hour. The unit of time being the same, the distance being the same, the destination being the same, you pay more. That all depends upon what do I do in my time. Let us all start from a basic resource we have. Look at this, talent, talent. All of us have talent. Talent inside us, hidden inside us. We have the talent. There was a time when students were divided into two boxes, the black box or the white box. White box students, intelligent students. Black box students, non-intelligent students, dull students. On, on what basis it was decided? Some question is given. They are asked to answer. If you get score, Good mark, you are intelligent, white box. If you fail, black box, non-intelligent. Until Howard Gardner came and said there is not one intelligent, but there are eight different intelligence. The theory of multiple intelligence, later on we are going to discuss the theory of multiple intelligence. A person can be a sports person. He may fail in arithmetic. In sports, he can earn a lot of money, a name, fame. Or a person could be a good composer of music. May not do well in sports. A person could be a good writer, thinker, but may not be able to dance. So, Howard Gardner said there are eight different types of talents. We are going to discuss it later on. So, believe it as a teacher as a mentor, as a coach, as an educationist, as a principal, every child has got a talent. The only job of an educationist is to bring out that talent and do what? Give them a platform. Vishwanathan Anand, Sachin Tendulkar, Virat Kohli, M. S. Swaminathan, M. S. Subhulakshmi, Swami Chinmayananda, Ramakrishna Paramahams, all these people had some talent. Yes or no? Bill Gates, somebody discovered their talent, somebody ignited them and gave them a platform. The moment a platform is given, it is up to him. I come as a 12th batsman, 12th man, only when there is something required, my, my presence is required, I go to the field and play. Or I can be a ball picker in a tennis court, or can, I can be a cab driver in a training institute. I can be a sweeper in a software company and I may get a job. There is a difference between getting a job and a career. See, the moment you are given a platform, I need to distinguish between a job and my career. Career is different, job is different. I may join as a clerk in a company. I may go up to the level of a managing director. I can go to a sports school and help students to take their uh, 
sports wear, uh, give them the shuttlecock and all that. But over a period of time, I may start liking the game in which I am of some help. I may become the world class champion. So the empowerment comes giving an opportunity for the student to rediscover themselves, to encourage them and say, oh, is this me? Then what happens? Knowledge. I am having a talent of, let's say, playing violin. My violin teacher has given me a good platform. He has shown me to what extent I can go in this music field. And my violin teacher encourages me, spends a lot of time with me. I don't miss any of the classes of my violin teacher. I think and breathe violin. Why? Because I am empowered. I don't, I am not taught violin, I am empowered. So knowledge, which means acquisition of knowledge is my responsibility. As a student, it is my responsibility. The teacher shows me the way. The teacher tells me that is the place where you can acquire the knowledge and I become a limitless person. The teacher gives the beginning few lessons and empowers the child. And the child becomes restless to know more about it. Tell me how long, how much you can teach in a classroom. 40 minutes. How much a cricket coach can teach or coach a student or a player. All those who have come to the top class in whatever field, they were empowered by their coach. So this is the age of the life coaches today. Nobody can be trained. Let's be very, very clear. Nobody can be motivated. Nobody can be changed. Nobody can be taught. But people can be ignited. That's why I put this uh, figure here from a caterpillar to a butterfly. A student comes to you as a caterpillar with some talent hidden inside. All those colors are already present here but not visible. But as the years go, the student blossoms into a beautiful butterfly. So acquisition of knowledge. So discuss with the students. Read the news items. Sensitize them with the market outside. The opportunities outside. Let them get excited. And then they will discover a purpose of coming to their platform. The school, the classroom, the playground, the music class, the sports stadium. In the class we teach. But the teaching gives only the knowledge. But the knowledge has to become what is called the skill. So you understand the link now? The link is, I have a talent. My teacher helps me to discover my talent. The teacher empowers me to identify a platform. The teacher empowers me to take responsibility for knowledge acquisition. My teacher encourages me to update my skill. Now, this is what I call as the empowerment process. Once this path is shown, there will be no distraction in the classroom. Why would a child dis be distracted? Whoever teaches the cricket players or the chess players or football players to be disciplined on the floor, on the uh, game, they know pretty well that they are now in pursuit of their talent and not pursuit of a game. The most important thing in empowerment and disempowerment or non-empowerment or lack of empowerment is a beautiful word called focus. Because my teacher has empowered me, because my teacher has made me excited, look for the infinity that my platform offers. Because my teacher has opened my eyes, Guru, when you take it, Gu represents darkness, Hru represents, represents light. That's why you say Guru. My teacher has shown me the light. 
and my teacher has helped me to acquire my knowledge and automatically I become focused. Next time, when you are students studying, look at the way body language, looking here, looking there, looking here, looking there. But next time you watch a world class test player, chess player playing, a world class cricketer facing the next ball, look at his concentration, focus, focus is not enforced, focus is not to satisfy somebody, focus is driven inside, a focus is self monitored discipline, a self enforced obedience. My eyes shall focus only this, my ears will hear only this, the next one hour there is no world outside me except my game, except my math problem. Once you accept all this, the next automatic thing is my attitude. We are going to discuss a lot of, lot of things on attitude as we proceed further. Attitude is very, very important. Sometime back I mentioned to you that attitude, if you give a number to each of the letter, A is the first letter in the um, alphabet, 1. E, for example, is the fifth letter and D is the fourth letter. You add up, you get 100. Discipline and attitude have the uniqueness to get this total of 100. So, empowerment means the teacher should develop the attitude. What are the attitudes? The attitude of curiosity. The attitude of wanting to learn, the attitude of not wasting time, the attitude of respecting teachers, the attitude of um, managing their uh, activities within a period of time, the attitude of giving respect to the teacher, parents and the people at large, the attitude of frugality, the attitude of wanting to do something perfect. These are the attitudes. They don't teach attitude in a classroom. But the teacher has to encourage positive mental attitude. I am sure you would have come across this term, positive mental attitude, PMA they call it as. As you go to the class, first of all, what is your attitude as a teacher? Are you serious about empowerment or are you there because you need money? Not only attitude, but I am going to introduce a very, very important word called passion. Do you have passion? Passion is that mindset in you that you don't look at your clock, you don't look at anything. There is no Sunday, there is no Monday, there is no holiday, there is no morning, there is no evening. Passion. A passion is a strong desire, a very strong desire to pursue what you are doing. doing. Passion. So, empowerment means helping children to understand that they have a talent, Showing them the platform, making them to be self-responsible for knowledge acquisition, skill acquisition, so that their focus is their future, a mental vision of what they want to be in their life. Empowerment is about attitude building. Empowerment is becoming passionate as a teacher and helping students to become passionate. When you do all this, you don't have to bother about behavior and action. Actually, it is the tip of the iceberg. When you see this, when you close all this, you see only the behavior outside. You see a deviant behavior. You, you see a child doing mischief in the classroom. You see a, a student um, doing something which is unrelated to his, uh, uh, his call of duties. You punish that, that student. But as long as this chain of event is understood. As long as that student believes that he has got a talent, as long as that student wants a platform to showcase his talent, as long as that student wants to take responsibility for himself and acquire skill and as long as the focus is driven by the attitude and passion, behavior cannot be changed. That is why I said nobody can be taught, nobody can be motivated, nobody can be punished, nobody can be corrected, nobody can be done anything. It all is from outside. I hope I have explained to you what it means from teaching to making students taking responsibility as a AI of or empowering students. I hope I have explained to you what it means 
from teaching to empowerment we need to understand what passion is wait for the next episode SRM TV is not just a school it's a one time experience VM Nagar Tiruvallur 